Hey YouTube, what's going on? This is Nate here, and in this video I'm going to be doing a demo of the iTether application, as well as give you guys my uh, thoughts on its removal from the App Store today. So in case you haven't heard, iTether was an application that was made available in the App Store until about 12 p.m. Eastern Time. It cost $14.99, it was just a one-time fee, and it allowed you to tether your iPhone's internet connection to your computer. Uh, so this is a great app, especially if you happen to live in the United States, where they charge you an additional fee in order to use uh, the tethering feature. Additionally, if you happen to have an unlimited data plan and you're on AT&T's network, they would make you go down to a cap data plan, as well as pay more money to have the tethering feature. So if you fell into that scenario like me, this was definitely a great app for you. So uh, what I found interesting was that Apple decided to approve this app to begin with. In the past, apps have tried to sneak in tethering features that were removed shortly after they became live on the uh, App Store. So I was kind of confused why Apple even decided to approve this to begin with, but according to Tether's blog post on their website here, they say that we were very clear when we were listing the app, so Apple knew that this was a tethering app, they knew that was its primary function, and uh, Apple had followed up with uh, follow-up questions and even requested a video uh, uh, that showed a demo of how the application worked. Uh, but nonetheless, they decided to approve it. But then at 12 p.m. Eastern Time today, they decided to remove it, and they said that it, it was for the reason that it burdened carriers' networks. Uh, so Apple, or the company, was very disappointed in Apple's decision and felt that uh, this was not a valid reason for removing it from the App Store uh, because apps like Netflix, or you could even say their built-in YouTube application, uh, would definitely burden uh, carriers' networks. Uh, because according to their data, they've got about 500,000 users from the uh, Android from Android handsets as well as BlackBerry handsets, and they use less than 200 megabytes of data per month. So that's definitely a valid argument. Uh, but you could also say that carriers are entitled to charge for tethering if they want to. Uh, so you're kind of cheating them out of their money by using this application. Uh, so according to Apple, users who have already purchased the iTether app will be able to continue to use the product and the Tether company is saying that they're evaluating their options and to stay tuned. So some people say they might take legal action against Apple. We'll have to wait and see what comes of this in the next couple of days. So in the remaining portion of this video, I'm going to demo the app for you and show you how it works. All right, so I've now pulled up my iPhone 4S on camera here, and you're going to notice the Tether application on the right-hand side. So let's go ahead and open that up. And in here, there's nothing to set up. Everything's already been done for you, which is really nice. So it's a very simple layout, just providing you with some basic information about your tethering usage. Now, in order to tether your iPhone to your computer, you're going to have to download a desktop client that is available for both Windows and Mac from the tether.com website. So I've got that downloaded already, and we'll open that up from my launch pad. And in here, it provides you with some of the basic, same basic information that you receive on your iPhone screen. Now, once the client is open and your phone is connected, it'll bring you to this start page here, and you know you're connected when you see the green check mark. So back into the client it itself, it has identified my smart smartphone as being an iPhone. The connection type is through USB, and it'll let you know how many packets you have sent and received, as well as how much data you have sent and received. So I've uh, done some speed tests uh, with the speedtest.net uh, website uh, by tethering my iPhone, and I've noticed that the data speeds have been about the same uh, that I would have received with the iPhone 4S, which is good to see. So if you guys have picked up this application today, let me know what you guys think about it in a comment down below. Other than that, please like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.